Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera, and today he'll be walking us through the process of measuring and installing a new chain. For this task, you will need your chain, a ruler or a measuring tape, or a chain gauge measuring, what, what is this called? A chain break, and a quick link tool if you have one. We're in the process of converting this bike from a two by to a one by, so we figured it was a good time to talk about installing a new chain and when you should replace the chain, et cetera, because that's definitely a question that we have gotten a lot. This is the chain that just came off the bike and we wanna see if it is too worn out to continue being a chain on the bike. You don't have to take your chain off to do this. We just already had it off. Why would you worry about replacing your chain? I know the answer to this question. If you replace your chain at regular intervals before it gets too worn out, you can go much longer before you replace the rest of your drivetrain. I think there's like a little bit of a myth that you have to replace everything at once all the time. That is not true unless you let it wear out to the point where, I don't entirely understand, but I guess the like little teeth on the cogs are so worn down that the, the chain like wears with them. As the chain wears, it stretches, and then it starts like cupping the teeth on the chain ring and the cassette. And when your teeth are cupped, then if you put a new chain on, the new chain won't fit properly and it'll skip. So then you have to replace everything at that point. The easiest way to check your chain wear is with a chain measurement tool. However, we will show you a way to do it with a tape measure. This is pretty straightforward. You put this side in like that. Okay, we decided that was stupid, so we're putting it on the bike. Okay, so using one of these tools is super duper easy. You just pop one side in, and then you see if the other side falls in. And the side that you pop in has a little spring thing so that it centers between those pins. And obviously Sid can force it in, yeah, you can force it in because of the spring on this side. Uh, so that's okay. why you just drop it down. And if it doesn't go into the pin, then it's not worn out and you're fine. Method number two is a ruler or because we could not find a ruler a tape measure, which I feel like is going to be slightly more annoying. You line the zero up with one of these round bits, pins, rivets, and then you see where the 12 ends up. And I think it's supposed to be like 24 some things, but I think you're, you're basically measuring 12 links, which is 24 pins. I mean, I'm just saying, I feel like the other videos on YouTube make like a big fuss over how many pins it is when really like, unless it's like wildly stretched out, it's always gonna be right around 12, right? You want true. the line to be on a pin. If 12 is on a pin, then you're good. And if it's more than a 16th past a pin, then that's bad. <laughs> Zero there. Mm -hmm. And then we go up and 12 is like right at the center of the pin, so this chain is totally fine. I feel like you don't need to be counting your things. You just does 12 line up to a hole. Totally. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we are currently taking this bike from a two by to a one by. So right now this chain is way too long, so we're gonna pop it off and show you the install procedure. Ah! First things first, don't lose your quick link. It's a terrible thing to do. You took that side off. There you go. So this is an 11 speed. For nine, 10, and 11, it's the same, which is what we're about to show you. And then to, for 12, it's very slightly differently, and we will show you that in just a second. This is a full suspension gravel bike. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> There's a shock. Like we need to compress the suspension. The easiest way to do that is to remove the air from the shock. Okay. And since we haven't actually set this up for me yet, I don't care what the air yeah. pressure is, so if feel free care. to just let it out. If you do care, just make sure you measure it as you take it off. Oh, it's locked out. How about now? Ah, uh, much better. Now that we have all the air out of the shock, Sid is going to put the chain from biggest cog on the cassette to biggest... Okay, I don't think this is gonna be long enough. 
We must be confused. It's a much bigger cassette than what we previously had. I think we might be dumb. You, you measure big to big, and the big to big used to be like a 40, I don't know, 45 on the front and a 34 on the back. But now it's a 42 on the front and a 42 on the back, so it's too short. Which is fine, because we were gonna put a new chain on anyway before we realized this one was actually not worn out. So new now chain. we're just back to where we were. Hopefully this one's long enough. I like this better anyway, the other one was gross. So you wanna make sure your letters are facing out. V-I-A Japan, are those the letters? That Check the other side. The other side should have nothing on it. The other side has nothing on it. I didn't know that. Oh, that's a cat hair. We have got it from the biggest cog in the back around the front chain ring. Which if it were a two by, we would do it around the bigger ring. chain ring. Now that we have let all of the air out of the suspension, we basically need to compress the suspension. I'm After I compress it, it you're gonna touches. mark where the chains line up. This is hard cause it's all slimy. So you've got it marked where it is? Basically right between these two. We don't care about half links. Yeah. So if you're in the middle, you're always gonna go longer. So that means it's this that pin. Point. So now with 9, 10, 11 speed systems, you add two links. One, two. Okay. Then you see, are they outer inner? Those are two inners. The default when measuring chains is if things don't line up properly, you go bigger because otherwise your chain will be too short. Longer. We are inside to inside after adding two. So we're gonna add one more link, which in our case is the quick link. So on a 12 speed system like this bike, you do the same thing. So Sid's measuring big to big, suspension's compressed, and basically I don't think you can tighten anymore. So you'll go to that one, right? Cause it mm -hmm. doesn't actually measure to that one. So you go to that one. And then if it's outside to inside, like it is right now, you add five. If it's inside to inside, you add four. Now we run it through the derailleur. This was the part, this would be the part where you would use your chain brake and cut the chain if you Except need to. We're actually apparently we don't need to. Chain. So the reason we add two links, because we're already measuring big to big the, with it compressed. The reason we add the two links is because we aren't running through our derailleur yet. So that is now what we need to do, which is run it through the derailleur. Okay, I feel like derailleurs are like harder than people give them credit for. <laughs> I feel like I need a guidebook every time. Well, the key is what you were just doing right there, which is correct. That little pin thing, you always go over it. Is this a pin? Well, I don't know, what do you wanna call it? I don't know, I just feel like we're calling everything like pins. Okay, we can call it something else. You make up a new name for it. A wall? A wall. <laughs> you have to go <laughs> over the wall. Around the hill. Over the fence, and down the, the waterfall. Down the waterfall. <laughs> that actually sure. might work for yeah, me. Yeah. Okay, and now we're gonna do quick links, which means I get to share with you guys my favorite tool. You put one pin through this side. I find it easiest to do each side and then try to put them together. This is the tricky part. Don't really have the finesse with this one. It's just super I... annoying because when I put the other chain on, it worked like instantly and I don't know what the heck is going on here. There we go, one side. So you pop it in so that it's in the like the big holes where it goes in easily. It's partially installed, which is why it looks funny. And then we're gonna swoop in here, this amazing tool. And we're gonna use the connect side. And then, boom! What is Special it called? Tool. It's the Shimano Quick Link tool. Link in description. <laughs> it's the best tool. Okay, so we'll demonstrate the remove function yes. so that we can do this the old fashioned way. Oh no, I didn't want to undo it that far. Gosh darn it. No, come back. Okay, so if you don't have a quick link tool, you poor soul. We do this, the first step is still this kind of annoying, like put it together, you get to this point. And then you, I mean, I know you're supposed to step on the pedal. I'm literally always doing this and there's no pedal on the bike. I don't know why. Make sure the chain is on the front chain ring. Back pedal until the quick link is up yeah, here okay. because otherwise it doesn't work. Now you're going to hold the back brake and twist the cranks forward, which if you had pedals on this bike, you could step on the pedal. It would also be nice if you had working brakes. Oh, pump them up. They just need to be bled because we just put them on. You're holding the rear brake 
and then you want to step on the pedal. Uh, stand up and show it what you're made of. Yeah, but there's no pedal. Well, I know. So, and so you're probably going to want to push the opposite side so you can push down and forward instead of pulling up. Like reach over uh, the bike, okay. Okay, well, that's push that down. Okay, but uh, just push. But am I, am I, is it time? It's time. All right, here we go. We Did go. that work that easily? <laughs> yeah. I've never done that before. <laughs> that's very satisfying. So, yeah. This is really hard without a pedal on. Now that you've installed your chain, is a great time to adjust your derailleur, make sure everything is. And this one is not. <laughs> it's good to go. And we do a video for that, so we'll put that right up there. This is how to measure and install a chain in under one minute. First, check your chain wear to see if it needs to be replaced. If using a chain wear indicator, place the first side in the space between two pins. Allow the other side to drop onto the chain. If it drops into the chain, it's time to replace your chain. If you don't have a chain wear indicator, take a ruler and line up zero with the pin. If 12 inches lines up more than 1 16th of an inch past the 24th pin, it's time to replace your chain. To size a new chain for your bicycle, start by running your chain around the biggest cog on the cassette and the biggest chain ring. If you have front and rear suspension, compress the rear suspension. The easiest way to do this is to remove the air from the shock. Don't forget to record your air pressure. With the suspension compressed, pull the chain taut and mark the pin where one end of the chain overlaps. If the end falls between two pins, go longer. For 8 to 11 speed chains, add two links. For 12 speed chains, add four. If the links match, for example inner to inner or outer to outer, add one additional link. If you are using a quick link, you should include it in your calculation and subtract one link. Cut your chain. Now place the chain on the smallest cog and the smallest chain ring and run it through the derailleur by going around the cassette and upper cog, over the flange, and around the lower cog. Connect the chain.